It's Senny and Finn's Games and Grabs Podcast. Now sponsored by Gamerborn Clothing. Go to gamerborn.co.uk and use code DDGAMING for 10% off your next order. What's happening guys? Welcome to episode 64 of the Games and Grabs podcast. I'm Sonny and with me as always is Finn Steele. Hello! How you doing Finn? I'm doing good, thank you. Very good. Yeah? Glad to be back. The yes, me too. Games and Grabs. Check out my t-shirt, isn't that cool? Soon <laughs> to be on sale. Yes. <laughs> you technically can buy it now, there should be a link in the uh, description somewhere. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's good, good to stuff. be back. It's very good to be back. We've had like three weeks off, maybe even more. I think the last episode that came out was June the 2nd, maybe? Um, yeah, it's our Extreme Rules Predictions, um, 25 days ago, according to SoundCloud. Right, okay, so that means we recorded it probably nearly a month ago. Yes. Long, long time. A lot's changed in that time as well, but we're back now. We're back. And we're baby. not going anywhere. Nope. Nope. Back for good. Back for good. Like, take that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly like take that. We just like take that. Yeah, ex- we're exactly the same as take that. Yeah, 100%. Yes. There's no differences at all. I said we can sing better. Yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. But no, it is good to be back. We're sorry that we've been away, but uh, like I said, we're not going anywhere now. We are well and truly back. And hopefully this new way of doing our podcast is going to be awesome going forward. Yeah, I think it should be. Well, I think it should be too. We like a little test mini episode, which you've probably heard by now, um, which both turned out pretty good. Um, so yeah, I don't see this being a problem. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't see there being a problem either. We're trying cool. something new out today, and hopefully all things being well, you can see us on YouTube uh, in individual corners of the screen. Yes. Good stuff. I'll do my editing magic and make it look mediocre. <laughs> you're, you're an no, editing wizard, Finn. I am. You got this covered. You've got it. I do. I got this. You got this. <laughs> All right. So, I know we only did this a couple of days ago, but what have you been playing? Um, played more Infamous. Uh, I've beaten the story mode on Infamous first light now. Okay. Um, just need to go through like the challenge maps and whatnot to get the platinum, which would be cool. Playing that okay. in glorious 4K HDR. It's very nice. The, the platform's supposed to be fairly easy for that, right? Yeah, please record. Just uh, beat all the challenges, get all the high scores, and uh, go get like so many kills on this and that, using this and that weapon or ability. Okay. So that Let's game record. is in my backlog. How long did it take <laughs> you to finish the story mode? Not long at all. Uh, like a couple no? of days. It's very short. A couple of days. But I mean, yeah. hours wise, hours wise, what do you think? Um, Like, like five, maybe? Four or five? Really? Is that it? Yeah. So it's very short. Okay, maybe it's just me being completely impatient and just wanting it to be over in an hour. <laughs> maybe. Just to get it out of my backlog. I need it to be done. Like, just just be done. Ugh. Yeah, well, that's with me getting collectibles and stuff as well. So if you just blast through it without giving a shit about collectibles, it'll probably take like two hours max. But I know it's an easy platinum, and that's why <laughs> that's what I play want it. to play it. But I'm just not patient enough. <laughs> Speaking of my games are easy platinums, uh, I also played on stream for some reason. Uh, Senran Kagura Estival Versus. Jesus, man, that game. <laughs> yeah, that's... I, mean, uh, I got, caught a bit of it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's there's no shame in that game. There's no uh, subtlety. Just all boobs and butts everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I sort of realised this. I mean, obviously, the game starts off and it's like, in a, it's very anime, so it's very Japanese. Oh, yes. And it's like, when that girl's bending over in the bush and her skirt is like riding up. Yeah. And then um, she, she slaps her ass. I was like, whoa. Yeah, just like instant. It's like five minutes into the game, just like bending over upskirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so weird. It's like, okay, now, but I have playing the, video uh, games, it, you know, is sometimes hard enough to describe as an adult. <laughs> yeah. But when there's video games like that, it becomes even harder. 
<laughs> but oh, why do it's I play video harder. games? Um, oh, <laughs> um, why do I play video games? Uh, well, I don't know. I just enjoy them. What What are you playing at the minute? Um. Um, <laughs> uh, no, don't worry about it. I've quit video games. <laughs> yeah, video games. What are they? Uh, yeah. So I've got the uh, box art here uh, on the reversible cover, which I'm showing to the camera now. Is uh, uh, yeah, if you watch this on YouTube, yeah, you should watch it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> that is the reversible cover art of that game. Wow. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, pretty uh, risque. Risque. Yeah. I mean, the game is very risque to say the least. I mean, like those bits where they transform into whatever the art is called and uh, <laughs> she turns around and she's naked and she pulls something out of nowhere. Somewhere. Hmm. <laughs> and I, I was like, oh, I put in the comments on YouTube. I was like, where has she just pulled that from? <laughs> there is nowhere she could have been keeping it, whatever it was. That's the magic of video games. Yay. Yeah. Then you had that vid- that music video part where it was... <laughs> it was just dancing in the nude, yeah. Yeah, like just <laughs> dancing naked and in like white bikinis and it was just like, whoa, okay. Quality AAA video game. Because, <laughs> <laughs> however, like when you were playing it, like the mechanics looked good. Yeah, I mean, it's a fun game. It's just like, it's like a Dynasty Warriors kind of thing. It's like uh, mashing through waves of enemies. Mm. Um, Except when and you yeah, hit them, their clothes come off. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> yeah. So with um, each layer... With each with each hit, a layer of clothing goes off. I think Pretty that's much. how you know you're winning. I'm not exactly, sure. yes. The more naked your opponent gets, the better you're doing. Or something. <laughs> because, because video games. Because video games. And because because Japan. video games, that's why. Because Japan also, yeah. <laughs> very interesting video game. And uh, very suitable for why do I own this. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's a new weekly feature on Daydreamer Gaming. Absolutely. YouTube.com forward slash Daydreamer Gaming. Ding. Ding. Cheap plug. <laughs> Very <laughs> cheap. Yeah. What else have you been playing? Or is that it? Um, it's, it's about it, really. Uh, how about since last time, anyway? <laughs> so what, what have you been playing? Any more, more Pez? Uh, no, you know what? I haven't put Pez on for a couple of days. <gasps> I know. I'm having withdrawal Say symptoms. I don't, how, <laughs> I don't know how, really, uh, I'm, I don't know how I'm coping. <laughs> yeah, um, it I'm might be like shaking it. Up. I need, I need yeah, that's it. As need you see pairs. me now, I'm surprised I'm not like a, a shaking, quivering mess. <laughs> but um, I, Good time. I'm probably going to play it later, like after this, because I am having withdrawal symptoms. Yeah, I'm missing my master league. <laughs> I need to play it. <laughs> but last night I went back to Outlast Two. Ooh, nice. Yeah, now, so I bought it like on on release. I was like, because I beat the first one, really enjoyed it. Um, so and I, want, and I wanted to play the second one. So because I played the demo and that was great. So I bought Outlast Two, played about forty-five minutes or so, got stuck, and thought, "Fuck this! I'm not playing it." <laughs> That's pretty much me on the first game. It's like, yeah, just running in circles, looking for like a tiny object in a dark room, being chased by some naked dude, and I was like, "I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't care." <laughs> I quit. Yeah, that's fair <laughs> enough. But so I so I put it back on last night. I was like, I was just flicking through my library, thinking I need something just just to play. And I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to play this. So I put it yes. on, and I, I, obviously I was at the bit where I was stuck at. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. The 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 attacker came for me. I ran away. The attacker stopped coming for me, and then all of a sudden I was where I needed to be. Oh, I was like, well, fuck. Awesome. Like, I could have really done with this <laughs> when I was playing it before. Then I just wouldn't have stopped playing. Yeah. Uh, but then I push forward. It's a very, it's the same, but it's different to the first one. The same, but different. Hmm. It's the same like core <laughs> mechanic, like where you, you know, you have a camcorder. Oh yeah. And you My have vision. to record shit. Yeah. And you've got to find batteries, which for some reason are everywhere. <laughs> yep. Yeah. People just leave uh, batteries lying around everywhere. Of course, yeah, because because of course, why not? Yeah. That's how they Video power games. their radios, and they're, they're the only things that are actually powered in these games by batteries. Oh yeah, just lounging around next to radios and stuff. But <laughs> it's it's in a different setting. So the first one's in a in like a mental hospital. Yeah. Um, this one is set sort of in Hicksville, USA. Ooh. In the middle of in the middle of like bumfuck nowhere. <laughs> nice, good name. And uh, thank you. And it's basically it's very religion heavy. It seems so uh, far, like uh, the trophy list would sort of appear that that's what it's hinting at. And also the fact that there's crosses, churches and Jesus everywhere also <laughs> suggests that. So Jesus. Jesus. But, you know, I like it so far. It's a weird game. Um, of course, it's weird because that's what they go. That's what they go for. Yeah, weird is good. But I'm going to I'm going to crack on with it. That's probably going to be the game I'm going to 
stick with until I'm done with. Um, nice. I'm not playing anything else until then. Cool. Good stuff. So, uh, enjoy re- me reporting back next week when I've not played it and all I've played is Pez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I was that's about of, it. Cool. So I was thinking of a way we could like get through our backlog. I was thinking oh, yeah. like if we pick, if we each pick like three games from our backlog. Okay. And uh, bring it onto the podcast and the other person can choose what game they play for that week. Okay. And uh, then the next week we can report back on what we've played and what we've enjoyed from it and if we're going to okay. continue playing. Okay. Um, I thought it'd be a good way to one, plow through our backlogs and two, make content for the podcast. I'd like to get into your bedroom soon. Absolutely. It could be a brand new feature. Yeah. Backlog cool. busting with Sonny and Finn. Yeah. That's a good suggestion. So, hmm, um, okay. Have you got three games in mind? Uh, Let's have a look. Um, okay. Um, we'll say... Well, we'll say about you. I don't know what you're going to pick. Let's go. We'll say Batman, um, Arkham, the newest one. Okay. Um, uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Okay. And Dishonored 2. Ooh. Which one um, should I play? I think you should play Dishonored 2. Ooh, interesting. I would, I would bet 10 quid to say you'd pick Batman. Yeah, I mean, because... Batman. Because... Uh, Batman. <laughs> Batman. 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 <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Batman. 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 Um... I don't know. I've I've not heard many people talk about Dishonored Two, so I'm actually intrigued to hear how it is. Hmm. Whereas I've got both of the other games, so uh, I think it'd be cool for you to play through Dishonored Two and just report back to me to tell me how that is, and then okay, crack on with the other ones. Cool. Okay, I'm okay with that. Um, Dishonored Two is actually one of the few games that has um, like PS4 Pro support. Um, so I'm actually looking forward to seeing what that's like. Oh, okay. Um, I bet it's great as well. Oh, yeah, I mean, sure. the first one's cool. <laughs> the first one's really cool very and cool. very hard. Yeah. But, um, you know, I expect this to be great. I know there's a standalone expansion coming out for it. Oh, uh, yeah. Did later it? on that in the that, year. Yeah. And that's E3, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yeah. It's like, it is standalone as well because I saw it on the PlayStation store for like, just like £20 or something. Nice. So that's a completely awesome. new character and stuff like that. So that'd be cool. Very cool. Um, Three from my backlog. So Outlast <laughs> 2, which I've already mentioned. Oh, yeah. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Ooh. And what else? Hmm. I've got so many games in my backlog. Uh, let's just stick Gravity <laughs> Rush in there because I've been Good trying one. to get through that game for what feels like forever. And <laughs> I just haven't. So, yeah. So, what, what do you think I should play out of all of them? Hmm. Choices, choices. Um, I feel like you should finish Outlast 2. You're already part way there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, finish that last two. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll pop back next week. Um, and yeah. Okay. So Outlast 2 for me, Dishonored 2 for you. Yeah, okay. Sequels all around. Sounds good. Cool. Um, I did put Hatsune Miku Project Eva X back on last night as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> watching that <laughs> nice. weird Japanese game that you were playing made me want to play a weird Japanese game as well, <laughs> so I just put that on. Well, I love good it. Choice. So. Um, it's a great game. It's less weird. <laughs> yeah. I'm it's far announced. less weird. Yeah, they're actually now speaking of gaming news, uh, announced like a physical collection with like both games included with Hatsune Miku, the most uh, recent one. Okay. So I might get that. I haven't bought the newest one yet. I think they've also also also. Well, I can words. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I think they've announced some tenth anniversary DLC as well for um, Project Diva Future Tone. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. So uh, that'd be cool. Awesome. I mean, that's more, more Miku. Like it needs more songs because it's got like I think <laughs> it's got each million, of them yeah. got over a hundred on it. It's like Jesus. <laughs> it's I've ridiculous, got, yeah. I've got one of them. I can't remember if it's Future Tone or the other one because two packs, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've got I have one of them, but they've just got I'm um, just got so many songs on it. Like I haven't so even many. got through them all. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Right, crazy. Let's move on to what little gaming news we have this week. Yeah, not a whole lot. Um, so the PlayStation Plus games and the Xbox games with gold games have been announced for July. Ah, uh, yes. Let's start with the Xbox One games, and I have them in front of me. Nice. So, for Xbox One, we have Grow Up, which is the oh, sequel yeah. to Grow Home. Okay. That's, which looks cool. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and another game it was a party game apparently I never heard of it <laughs> called Runbow 
Oh, uh, yeah. I think I know what it is. In sort which of. obstacles appear and disappear depending on the colour of the background. Oh, uh, yeah. I think sure. I've seen people play that. Mm. Yes, yeah, it seems pretty, seems pretty fun, I think. Okay, sure. I think, if I'm thinking the right game, yeah, it seems pretty fun. <laughs> okay. And um, as part of the backwards compatibility program on Xbox One, uh, Xbox 360 games, you will get Kane and Lynch 2. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> first I one wasn't like great. Didn't play the second one. Um, the first one sucked. The second one was better. But not but great. But it wasn't <laughs> great. If you haven't played it and you've got an Xbox One and it's free, play it. It's fine. Yeah. It won't take you long to complete. It's literally running, gunning and ducking. Yeah, there you go. It's that's, that's third so shooter. very simple. And it doesn't look great either. And I, it didn't look great then. I <laughs> doubt highly it looks any good now. Uh, yeah, probably not. Whoops. Hit my so there's that, there's that glowing recommendation. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Mm. <laughs> it's below <laughs> average. <laughs> there you go, that's better. That's probably better. That's probably a more accurate description of it. Yeah. Uh, and also, we have Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, which is an that's Xbox cool. 360 game as well. That'd be cool. Um, yeah. The Lego games are incredibly consistent, so... Yeah, I've, I think I've 100% of that one on the 360. We're back. Oh, right, okay. So you got, yeah. you got your 1000G. I did, yeah. Excellent. Fun times. Cool. Uh, have you got the PlayStation Plus games there in front of you? Um, I don't, but... I oh, know... okay, I'll get them, it's fine. Oh, okay. I know, what's good. I know what the PS4 ones were. Uh, they were Until Dawn, which is a very good game. Yep. Yeah, I've got a full live stream on, I think it's on Tony Vin Play, isn't it? Um, um, no, I don't think it is. I think it's on Daydreamer. Is it Daydreamer? Oh, cool, cool. Okay, excellent. Uh, go on, that. Uh, want to see more? <laughs> I think it is. Don't quote me on it. It's somewhere anyway. It's, it's, it's on the internet. On somewhere. the internet. Yeah, you'll find it. I, <laughs> I have a feeling it's on Daydreamer, but we'd we'd have to just find out. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and also, uh, the Game of Thrones Telltale um, uh, games are coming as well, which is cool. Um, he, he means series. He can you know what words. I mean. He, he can. You know what I mean. I know what he meant. <laughs> uh, I'm not a Game of Thrones fan, but it is an easy platinum, so I'll probably play it. There you go. <laughs> All about them easy platinums. Yeah. And yes, it is an easy platinum. Sweet. Uh, I don't have it, but I soon will for free. <laughs> for okay. Free. For free. <laughs> um, there is a party game that um, you get on... PlayStation 4 that they haven't included here. Oh? Um, yeah, let me just go on the PlayStation blog, because I saw it earlier on, but they haven't actually... They haven't put it on here. Oh, right. Let me just go get that one second. One of those, like, cross-buy ones with uh, PlayStation VR kind of thing. I'm not sure it is. I think it was something that was shown... I'll find it. I'll find it. I'm just looking now. Just loading hmm. the PlayStation blog up. How, okay, desperate, okay. how desperately exciting. <laughs> um, that's you. Excuse me? Me? No, that, that, no, that's what it's called. That's what the game's called. Oh. <laughs> As a special post E3 treat from 4th of July, and PlayStation, PlayStation Plus members will be able to download That's You as part of their membership. Me? In this irreverent party quiz, the first release from the new PlayLink range, right. you and up to five of your friends and family get to find out what you really think about each other with your TV, PS4, and tablet or smartphone in hand. Yeah. Answer over a thousand funny questions, takes part take part in daring doodle challenges, snap mm. selfies for photo challenges, and more. That sounds pretty fun. We should it, it try and get, get on stream that. Yeah, it does sound fun. We could we should we should do that because we're going to do a live stream as part of Daydreamer. Yeah, um, like a twenty four hour charity stream. So maybe we could get together all of us and well at least those of us that can and yeah. uh, play that because that sound that does sound fun. It does. That'd be cool. Like, like like those uh, Jackbox party games kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so cool. the full list we got: Until Dawn, great game, easy platinum. Yep. Uh, game of Thrones, cool game, easy platinum. Yep. That's you, which we've just discovered <laughs> what that is. Uh, on PlayStation Three, you get Tokyo Jungle, which is cool. Okay. And Dark Stalkers Resurrection, which I've never heard of. Oh, Dark. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's like it's a fighting game by my Capcom. Oh, okay. Capcom. And you get Don't Die, Mr. Robot, which is PlayStation Vita cross by with PS4. Oh, right, okay. And Neat. you get Element 4L, I think that's what it's called, for PlayStation Vita. All right. There you go. They are the cool. games for July. Nice. Good stuff. Now, Nintendo 
have Nintendo. announced a Super Nintendo Classic. Ah, yes. Excellent. So this is the follow-on from the interestingly launched NES Classic. <laughs> from yes, which they made five of and then no more. Yeah. When did that come out? Was it last year now? Uh, sure. I can't remember. No, I can't remember. And I don't have one, so I don't care. So, um, I'm but, yeah, the original NES, so I'm good. There you go. You've got a Super Nintendo as well, right? I do. There you go. So, for those of you that care about this, the Super Nintendo Mini comes with two controllers, two mm-hmm. wide SNES controllers. Hopefully, it's no longer than a centimeter in wide. <laughs> So, you get 21 games. Super Mario World, Super Mario Kart, uh, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, F-Zero, Super Metroid, the never-before-released Star Fox 2. Ooh. Uh, to be honest, I didn't know that either until sort of yesterday when it's, or whenever <laughs> it was announced. I'm okay. not much of a Nintendo guy, so I just had no idea. Bad play? Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Super Punch-Out, Castlevania 4, nice. Donkey Kong Country, Mega Man X, Kirby Superstar, which is apparently has eight games in one. It does. Shrugs. Final Fantasy Three. Ooh. Kirby's Dream Course, which I don't know what that is, which I'm guessing is a it's racing a, game. It's a golf game, I believe. Is it? Actually, no. I think that's something else. I can't remember. Okay. Star Fox, Yoshi's Island, Super Plus Mario game. RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. Great game. Contra Three, The Alien Wars. Great game. Secret of Mana. Great game. Earthbound. Great game. And Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Great game. Nice lineup of games there. Yeah, very nice. And that comes out September the 29th. All the top games. Yeah, actually, that is, you know what, that is a good lineup. Yeah, very good. Do you think next year they'll bring out a Nintendo 64 classic? That'd be cool. It would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, what game could it have there? Let's see, Ocarina of Time. Uh, Mario 64. Yep. Um, um, Mario Kart 64. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, was there a Donkey Kong? There was Donkey Kong 64, I think it's just called. Of course. Uh, it. Um, <laughs> Diddy uh, Kong Racing, I guess. Yeah, that could happen. Perfect uh, Dark, would they put that on there? I know it's maybe. part of the Rare oh. Collection that's on Xbox One. Yeah. Hmm. Monkey Wars, not sure. Mm. Same thing with Golden Eyes. Like, uh, Probably put F Zero X on there. Yeah, that could work. Mm, they won't be able to get Goldeneye because the licensing. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming. Yeah, you're unless right. Nintendo own that and then they can just do it, but I don't think that's going to happen. And uh, no, I think we, we would have seen like some sort of ACB release by now. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Difficult to say, really. I mean, there were so many good Nintendo 64 games. Yeah. It's. Mm, I don't know. I mean, they could do if they if they, this is something they're just going to keep doing, like bringing little minis out, especially of the the cartridge based consoles. Uh, that'd be a cool thing. It would be. I agree. Yeah, agreed. Okay. You got any more gaming news? There really isn't a lot. Um, not really. Um, let me just check. Uh, my preferred gaming news website. Okay. Real quick to make sure that nothing's happened while I've been talking. Um, I'm pretty certain that there isn't really much going on. Um, uh, yeah, pretty, um, pretty slow week for these wise. Okay. So, Finn, it's the is first it? podcast of July. It is. So of. tell me, <laughs> what made the list of games uh, being released in July? Well, I'll tell you. Um, on July 11th, we have Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. Wait, PS4. hang on a second. July Hello. 11th is when the first game comes out? Apparently so, according to VG247. Okay. <laughs> So this is Final Fantasy XII. They've gone back in time and re-released it. Yes, good game. Uh, the other stuff, which is only in the Japanese version, I think. I can't remember. Uh, but it's cool. I'll, I'll definitely buy it. And play right, it. Fair enough. It's a very <laughs> much a U game anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we have a game called Black the Fall. Shrug. Coming out to PS, on PS, uh, PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Same What's day. What's it called? Uh, Black the Fall. I'm assuming this isn't a sequel to the excellent Black... <laughs> That was on like Xbox and PS2. Good question. It's um, definitely not. We'd know about it. Yeah. Oh, it looks like some indie game, I guess. <laughs> I have no idea. Shrug. Good. Um, yeah. <laughs> was it a game called Defenders of Ekron? Shrug. Coming out on PC and PS4 on the same day. Jesus. July yep. <clears throat> okay. July's an interesting month so far. Sure is. It's a summer drought, supposedly. <laughs> um, 
We have Minecraft Story Mode Season 2, Episode 1 on uh, everything on <laughs> July 11th. Of course, it's literally going to be on everything. Your calculator, your potatoes, everything. Your, toaster, your potatoes. <laughs> it's going to be on literally everything. Literally uh, everything. Um, that's a, that'd be a cool. That'd be cool. The first one is actually very good. Um, I watched my nephew play it on my PS4, and he loved it, and cool. it looks very fun. Excellent. Good stuff. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles on PC and PS4 on July 18th. For fuck's sake, what is July? I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, we've got Splatoon 2, that's a good one, on Switch. Oh, okay, there we go. On July 21st. Nice. Jesus, this takes it. all the way until July 21st <laughs> for something half decent to come out. Yeah, seriously. Maybe I'm being harsh on Minecraft, but come on. <laughs> come on. Oh dear. Oh, we've finally got the uh, Destiny 2 open beta on July 21st. What? On PS4 and Xbox. Uh, okay. Apparently that's the thing. Wait, we need to pre-order this though, right? Probably, yeah. I think you need to pre-order it. I'm going <laughs> to scrape a code from somewhere. There's no <laughs> way I'm not getting in that beta. Yeah, scrape a 2 and I'm going to play as well. Hey, if you're listening <laughs> to this and you have a spare code or five for the Destiny 2 beta, <laughs> hit us up because yeah. uh, Daydreamers Play is screaming out for this. Absolutely. We need it. Don't fuck around. Get us them Destiny 2 codes. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Who got... Uh, what else we got? Uh, Fallen Legion Shrug on PS4 and Vita on July 25th. No idea. God um, mighty. Papaya. Papaya. P-Y-R-E. <laughs> Paya. Papaya. Papaya. <laughs> PC and PS4. What? Slide on your fifth. Um, Danganronpa. Another episode. Ultra Despair Girls. Don't ask. On PC. I was PC game. No one cares. Um, but it's originally a PlayStation Vita game, which is very good. Um, take my word for it. Uh, I'm taking yeah. it. I'm taking your word for it. It sounds like it very much sounds like a U game. Oh uh, yeah, it's like a spin-off of the Danganronpa games. It's like a third version shooter, kind of. It's cool. Okay. Uh, you have Hey Pikmin on 3DS. That'll be cool. That could be cool, yeah. Pikmin's awesome. And we have the uh, Nintendo 2DS XL console coming out on July 28th oh, as well. Oh, okay. I mean, it does look very cool, actually. Um, it does. I saw, well, I saw it when they sort of announced it, and I thought, yeah, that looks pretty awesome. And my nephew's only just got a 2DS, so... Yeah, um, that sucks, but um, it looks very cool. It's basically a smaller 3DS. It's like folds over and stuff. So yeah, um, yeah, it looks great. And well, okay, basically it's a 3DS without 3D. So it's a Nintendo DS. I don't know. Right, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you, if you haven't, if you haven't, if you never got around to getting a uh, 3DS and interested in playing the massive backlog of awesome games, uh, now's the time to do it. That it just has an incredible catalog of games. Yeah, so games. it's probably worth owning one anyway. Like even mm. if it's only going to sit there and you're going to pick it up <laughs> once or twice a month, like yeah. I would say it's absolutely worth having one because the amount of games that you can pick up just randomly while walking around in shops, just think, oh, I'll just pick that up. It's cheap. Yeah, and the game. chances and are it's probably awesome. There's a lot of shit on there as well. Don't get me wrong, but oh yeah, it has an incredible catalogue of games. So if you don't have one, just get one. You may absolutely. as well have one. And it's um, backwards compatible with all original DS games, so it's even more games for you. There it's you amazing. Go. It's a great console. Add to them backlogs. Go nuts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fun times. Oh, absolutely. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for July. Not a well, whole lot. Jesus, July is rubbish. I mean, it's a bit. Splatoon 2 is a highlight, but other than that... Splatoon and maybe 2 and maybe a shout out to Minecraft. Yeah. Maybe. 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 <laughs> um, I mean, come on. I mean, there's three games out on Friday. Friday, 30th of June. <laughs> there's four games that are coming out that are probably pretty awesome. So we've got the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, which everybody on Ooh, the, yes. in the world who has a PS4 is hyped for. Even yep. people who don't have a PS4 are hyped for it. Yep. Um, the Golf Club 2, which is a big one for me and Denzel, we're going to play that. Micro Sports. Machines World Tour, it comes out on Friday. As does the PlayStation 4 version of Gaming Mule's favourite game, Elite Dangerous. Ooh. That's that's June 30th. That's better than the whole of July. Pretty much, yeah. Just save some stuff. I guess people just want their games out. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Just get them all out at once and screw July. No one likes, no one likes July. Okay. So. <laughs> Except Nintendo, I guess. Yeah, because Nintendo. <laughs> they don't give a fuck what month it is. <laughs> yeah. They don't give a fuck what you're releasing. 
They will do it anyway because Nintendo. Nintendo. Just Nintendo. I said I was looking at some of the games on the PlayStation Store yesterday and like just just the games that come out on the same day as other games it's just ridiculous. I was looking at (laughs) Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. Oh, yeah. That comes out the same day as something enormous. I can't remember which game it is, but it's something that it probably shouldn't come out on the same day as. Yeah. Happens a lot. You just look at it and you think, why are you releasing on the same day? There's nothing coming out the week before. Just bring it out then. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. Remember that happened, we, happened to something else as well. I can't remember what it was. It's too it was many Titanfall, wasn't it? And, uh, what was Titanfall? Titanfall oh, yeah, Titan- was, literally came out in the same month as Call of Duty and Battlefield, wasn't it, last year? Oh, uh, yeah. And everyone was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Like, these are the two biggest first-person shooters like that get made every year. And you're slotting Titanfall in there. It's yeah. I mean, we, we covered this massively, didn't we, last year? We talked about <laughs> it a lot yeah. because we just could not believe how stupid it was. <laughs> like, even talking about it now, I can't believe how stupid it is. Very stupid. Was. I, well, I seem well. to remember there's something like with like, Tomb Raider, uh, right to the Tomb Raider thing. There's another huge game that came out. Yeah, yeah, or Xbox One, I think, originally. Okay. Um, but something else, something else came out at the same time, which was like, why would you do that? I can't remember what game it was, though. Uh, I think you're right. I can't remember what it was, but uh, I think you're right. We'll, we'll have a look and we'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah. So, they made the list yeah. of games coming out in July. Spoilers, it's piss poor. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty Splatoon, much. It's Splatoon 2, though. Mm. Splatoon 2 and an UDS. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk wrestling. Wrestling. Okay, dokie. Wrestling. That, that thump there was me banging on the table that I've got all this stuff set up on. <laughs> nice. I'm not used to doing the podcast like this. It's so weird. I'm like looking into a camera. Oh, yeah. So I've, got, I've basically got the the MacBook camera just looking at me recording. <laughs> and I've got all the stuff going on in the background. I've got, ooh, I've got a Darth Vader pillow and then a Pokeball pillow there, look. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is me, a grown man living in a flat on my own, and I've, uh, this is the stuff that I have in my flat. But on the other field, bro, <laughs> I've got yeah, a Sonic so. pillow over there. I've got like trying to buy games everywhere, wrestling garbage. Yeah. We're the coolest. Fun times. We the coolest people on the planet. Pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty certain sure. that is absolutely the case. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm also wearing a really cool Parts Unknown wrestling T-shirt as well. Oh, awesome. Which is it's a good T-shirt. It's a good T-shirt, which is from. Uh, Squared Circle Tees, which are yeah. awesome. And they should awesome. probably sponsor us. Yeah, they should. Get on that, so, Squared so Circle. Guys, if you're listening to this... <laughs> <laughs> Give us money, please. Yes. Thanks. And free t-shirts also. Yes. Of course. Thanks. Love you. Thanks. <laughs> let's talk uh, wrestling, Finn. Yes, let's. Um, so, what's this week's uh, Raw Smackdown? Uh, I've seen Raw, and I've seen most cool. of Smackdown. I was, I've been... Cool. You know what? I, I, got, I got in from work today, and I was like... Okay, I've got plenty of time here. I'm going to watch Raw and SmackDown, and I'm going to watch SmackDown, and it's going to be fine. Because so, I watched some of it this morning, I thought, well, you know, I'll just watch the rest of it when I get in. I faffed incredibly. <laughs> yeah, I did some grown up stuff. Yeah, my entire day has been just a massive faff. Yeah, just a day I got, of faff. <laughs> I got in. I put some washing on, you know, because you know, grown up stuff. Boo. Had some dinner. <laughs> sat and had a, uh, had a had a latte after after work. Fancy. Like trying to figure out video and stuff and <laughs> hung some clothes up just you know boring stuff like really boring stuff <laughs> yeah signed up for Odin Unlimited because that's now my local cinema ooh nice my reasoning behind this was because uh, basically there's two films coming out in the space of this week oh, yeah. so I figured signing up to Odin Unlimited is actually cheaper than going to the cinema twice yeah probably true which is crazy so I'm going to go see <laughs> Rise of, I'm going to go see Planet of the Apes the new one. Oh yeah because the other two are amazing. Uh, have, you, have you seen them? Me? Watch movies? Nah. Okay, you should see them. Good <laughs> movies. And I'm going to go and watch Spider-Man next week as well, because that looks cool. So. Spider-Man. Yeah. Right. Pro cool. wrestling. So, yes, I've seen Raw. I've not seen all of SmackDown, but I think I know what happens. So, cool. let's start with Raw. Okay. Uh, so, it's all off with everyone's favorite wrestler, Roman Reigns, uh, coming Boo! down. Boo! It's constant booing the entire time. Um, yep. He accepts uh, the ambulance match. Ambulance match. Ah, <laughs> ambulance match. match. Yeah. Um, that was... Uh, uh, the challenge was issued by Braun Strowman. Yeah, I'll help you out. Right, I'll, I'll give you that little <laughs> plot along. He was challenged to by Braun Strowman. That's what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, at Great Balls of Fire. Uh, and he accepts that. And then like an ambulance backs into the arena. Uh, Roman goes in, opens the doors, 
but no one's there. <laughs> but then <gasps> jump jumped from behind by, of course, Ron Strowman. Of course. And then obviously you throw him off the stage into the uh, ambulance. Almost smacked his head back on the stage. Pretty cool. Um, it was very cool. He actually he, he lobbed him, man. It was good. <laughs> yeah, so very cool looking. Yeah. Uh, and they threw Roman Roman into the ambulance, and the ambulance drove off, and it was cool. Everyone cheered. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone cheered for the heel. Yeah. Who's not a heel? Something's, something's not right here. <laughs> but it was a cool little segment. It was. It was a good segment. Um, I like Roman Reigns. I mean, I think he is a heel. I don't <laughs> think he's the face now. I mean, obviously some little kids like him, but... You know, for the most part, he's getting booed out of the building. And I like his arrogance. I like his cockiness. But like when he was like, if you'll be quiet for a minute, I'm probably going to tell you something you're going to enjoy. And <laughs> it was that he got beat up and, you know, everyone loved it, of course. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, I like that side of Roman Reigns. I th- it works so well. Yeah, like, it does. And the crowd just fucking hate him. <laughs> yeah. So what they, they, they may as well not turn him properly heel. They may as well just keep it as it is. Yeah, they might as well. Just let him keep being such a cocky, arrogant little bastard every <laughs> week. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Braun has come back way quicker than he was expected, right? Oh, yeah. Um, well, they said uh, six months. Mm. Uh, I, think, I think it was just WWE like, extending it just for, to make him look stronger when he does return early. Okay, right. But, so he's uh, due back in two weeks. They said six months and he was back, right? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's cool to see him back. I like me some more Strowman. Yeah, very, very cool. I, you know what? I, I don't hate this um, Strowman versus Reigns feud either. I know we've seen it now a bit, but it just feels like they have great chemistry with each other. Yeah, it's cool. So I'm not mad at it. Uh, I don't like ambulance matches. I don't really like gimmick matches, like stupid no. gimmick matches like that and the one that we're going to talk about a little later on. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's fine because I think they'll put a great match on. Reigns always does put great matches on, regardless of whatever you think of him. <laughs> um, yeah, it'll be fun. I, I like this feud. I like Braun as well. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so we had uh, Cesaro, Sheamus and Elias Sampson in the ring, who were about to uh, sing a little song, but was interrupted by the Hardys. Thank Christ. Yep. So we had the Hardys and Finn Balor versus Cesaro, Sheamus and Elias. It's a good job too because um, she- uh, Sheamus and Cesaro's mics weren't on. Oh, were they? <laughs> I didn't even notice. Like they were talking, like Elias Samson was doing his, hey, I'm Elias Samson, blah, blah, blah. Good um, Thank you. <laughs> and to him, like Sheamus and Cesaro were like talking, but you couldn't hear them. Oh, right. <laughs> it's like, well, th- this, probably, this probably isn't going to happen. Yeah. And <laughs> because their mics aren't fucking on. <laughs> but you know, uh, I, I yeah. quite like Elias Samson. Yeah, me too. I'm warming to him. He's uh, once again, and then a heel he actually gets booed, which is nice. Yeah, that is nice. <laughs> it's refreshing, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. It's the um, guitar man. It pisses people off. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. singing in general. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with Aiden English right now. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just during the match, um, some knobhead called Josh Duramel came down. Was on commentary. Josh Duramel. He's in. He's basically famous for being in all of the Transformers movies. Oh. Uh, and that is it. And it was fairly clear that he knew absolutely fuck all <laughs> about professional wrestling. Yeah, He had no much. idea what he, why he was there. Yeah, I had no idea why he was there. He told everybody <laughs> that Vince McMahon was backstage. Yeah, that's the mistake. <laughs> and of course, we already knew that. But Yeah, of course, but... Vince McMahon. Kayfabe, come on. Yeah, kayfabe. Come on, Josh. Surely he was... <laughs> the thing is with this, surely he was prepped before he went out there <laughs> don't say yeah. this don't say that let's talk about Transformers and this other buddy movie that you're doing with Seamus or whatever yeah it's like well, oh and then he's like yeah I saw Vince McMahon backstage and he's great and like, oh, <laughs> God. God's hate <laughs> and then while the match was going on like like there was some you know some good wrestling going on with six very talented dudes in the ring and yep. they're just talking about Josh Dumel's career accolades it's like just yeah. piss off with this yeah Watch really them want, wrestling. Yeah, he wrote my notes here. So talk about the match, dickheads. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't, uh, and that so that it really it just annoyed me so much. I just thought yeah, this dick same. should not be here. Me too. And Transformers it sucks. So fuck it does. You. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was, it was a good match. If it can, was a good match. If you, yeah. if you mute, mute it and watch it on, on mute, it's a good match. Um, uh, Finn yeah. ended up winning with the coup de gras to Cesaro, and it was cool. Yeah, it's very exciting. I mean, I'm still excited that the Hardys are back. Mm, um, they don't really look like... They, well, they've not lost a step. Uh, oh, no. They still look great as well. And, you know, it's, 
Yeah, exactly. It's it's very very cool. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. I was it, it, seeing that sort of talent in the ring, and it just felt fresh, you know, like because you, you you know you've never seen the Hardys team up with Finn before, and yeah. Elias Sampson's in there, so that gives it something different. The one question I do have is is Finn feuding with Elias Sampson? Um, it seems that way. Yeah, not the best way to get Elias uh, looking strong because you know he's not going to win the feud. Of course. So, Definitely yeah. not. Bit, bit of a weird one, but I don't know. It could be interesting. I guess it gives Finn something to do whilst everyone else has got other stuff happening. True. Shrug. Yeah. Shrug. <laughs> so yeah, after that we had um, Goldust versus R Truth. Mm. Uh, Gold, Goldust came down with his own gold cameraman, <laughs> <laughs> decked out in gold. Um, and yeah, wearing his old like old old school attire. Mm. Which is cool. No robe. Um, I was disappointed. Yeah, no rope, no no wig, which is a shame. Yeah. Um, but pretty cool. I like all this. I like his heel uh, persona. Me too. I'm enjoying this little. Can you call it a push? I don't know. Can you call it a push? No. Maybe. But mm. uh, the match never started anyway because uh, he attacks uh, shoot before the match and uh, Truth got caught off to the back, I guess. Yeah, it, it wasn't much of a beatdown in my opinion. I saw it, I thought no. that makes Truth look incredibly weak. <laughs> yeah, but I thought, I thought the same thing. He's like, pulled him against the ring like corner thing ring post yeah I thought uh, he was, was going to do something it. really cool but he didn't yeah he's got him pushed him there and I was like okay that'll do yeah <laughs> I gave him, gave him a few more punches to the head and I was like that was it yeah I was like okay but um, very cool promo by Goldust beforehand as well so yep. uh, um, I mean he's a he's a seasoned pro at this so oh, yeah. uh, I hope that Goldust I mean because I assume they're going to fight properly at Great Balls of Fire probably and probably on the pre-show Oh. But then I want Goldust to do something good. I want Goldust to push on from this now. If, if this is going to be his, 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 like his final run, maybe, yeah. um, I'd like him to at least go for the IC title. That'd be cool. Maybe something like that. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I think him and The Miz could have some brilliant promos <laughs> like with each other, but... They're both, heels, both heels, yeah, and it, that it's it's sort of like because they they've both got this Hollywood actor type thing going on, yeah, and it's officially cool. gold dust gimmicky, so they could have some really good back and forth. Hmm, interesting. But with them both being heels, uh, that sort of maybe ruins that a little. But maybe you never know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, speaking of the Miz, after that uh, we had uh, we had Miz TV with some. Balls, oh, the guys in the balls. I'd yeah, do. Levar Ball and um, his his kid Lonzo Ball is was the Lakers draft pick. Now I'm a I'm a Lakers fan. What's a Lakers? Uh, so uh, Los Angeles Lakers, the basketball team. Yeah, I know. I'm joking. Right. <laughs> and like, he was there. He's the he was their number one draft pick in the uh, in the NBA draft. Like come fresh out of university or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it was cool uh, having him, and you could tell that he's maybe a little bit. Embarrassed by <laughs> by his dad, yeah, Levar, yeah. <laughs> his brother dropped the N word not once but twice. Yeah. During oh, he did it. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Yeah, so WWE had to issue a statement regarding that. So, <laughs> so yeah, you, no, you, tell, you, tell, you tell him that I was paying attention to this, can, can't you? So yeah, I mean, Levar <laughs> Burton made a sorry, Levar Ball, not Levar Burton, Jesus, um, <laughs> Levar Ball made a show of himself enough as it was. And interestingly, Curtis Axel has actually sort of said, who the hell is this clown? Stay off our stage. They were, that was literally the tweet that he sent out. Good. And uh, so LeVar, LeVar Ball is stood there in the ring with his top off. I mean, he's <laughs> jacked. He's in good shape, fair enough. But yeah. uh, I don't I don't need that crap on wrestling. No, I don't. It's just, it's dumb. It was it's balls. Like, it was uh, like, look, yes, introduce Alonzo Le- Le- Ball to the Staples Center because the Staples Center is where the Lakers play. That's cool. Fine. But, yeah. So, basically, it was in the background. It wasn't on the mic. The other one, the youngest, the younger son, who he actually said, uh, go get him, or whatever he said. <laughs> um, when LeVar took his shirt off, um, the uh, younger one said, uh, yeah, he, he dropped the <laughs> end bomb twice. Yeah. It's not a smart move. People are fucking stupid. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I mean, come on! 
It's not hard. Come on now. Yeah, come on. Jesus. I don't know. Anyway, that was rubbish. I feel sorry yep. for the Miz having to put up with that crap. I felt Same. even sorrier for Dean Ambrose having to come out and oh, God. Uh, try and soften the blow to what yes. was complete garbage. Yeah, um, yeah it, it, was me- it was a mess and it was an unnecessary mess as well. It was. Why uh, WWE insist on this shite? I do not know. God knows. Um, it's still a thing for the match afterwards. We had the Miz and the Miz to Raj, aka Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel, uh, versus uh, Dean Ambrose and Heath and Rhino. And it was kind of crap. Yeah, I skipped it. I skipped it. I, I, as soon as it. I saw that match was going on, I, I, I fast forwarded it. I knew that uh, the Miz and uh, the Miz to Raj won, um, but it's yeah. sort of uh, forgettable. Yeah, um, I don't mind Bo and Curtis Axel. I, I hope they do well because Bo was awesome in NXT. And it was kind of on the board him ever since he's been brought up. Um, but yeah, this is a crap match. Uh, Bo won with a like, <laughs> <laughs> Bo won with like a crappy roll up with some after some shit interference from Kurt Axel. So yeah, it was done. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for factions, and if this is going to be a thing going forward, fine. It's going to yeah. get lost. It's going to get lost in the shuffle, and no one will care about it. Is the long and short of it? Pretty much. It's a shame. Um, Two very talented guys that are going to be tagging along with the Miz, but. Um, they're forever going to be underutilized. They've tried pushing Curtis Axel. It just didn't work. They've tried oh, yeah. pushing Bo Dallas numerous times. It just doesn't work because nobody cares. And that that's the thing. They're trying to make people care, but people just don't. So, I don't know. What 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 can you do? Yes, not much. Um, but hey, uh, then we had another uh, cool segment uh, with Enzo Moro coming out, uh, calling out Big Cass after he attacked him the week before. Mm. Um, turned out it was Big Cass all along who was acting everybody. Oh, okay. Surprise, surprise. I'm shocked. Said no, um, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But it's actually a really good promo by uh, Enzo. Very good. Um, yeah. Very good. Uh, very um, good. Big Cass ended up apologising. Uh, both of them had like tears in their eyes and hugging each other. Said, oh, yeah, they're back together. Hooray. Um, and they got to the top of the stage. Uh, held a ha- uh, Big Cass held up Enzo's hand and then boom, big clothesline. It was a trick. Oh my goodness! Thank uh, God, because I was readying, I was readying my bullshit chance to throw at the TV when, yeah. when, when like they did the catchphrase and stuff in the ring, and they were hugging it out. I was thinking, no, they yeah, have not the pulled the plug on this after a week. Yeah, they just like, can't have. On. I was just thinking, did they just not have a payoff here, and they've just <laughs> thrown this together for no reason? Yeah, but I'm, but I'm thank- glad. I'm glad. Yes, thankfully, big ass closed on Menjo onto the floor, and then picks him up and threw him down the ramp. Ouch. Ouch. Very ouch. Um, um, but great, great, great work from Enzo. Um, this is mm. the first, I put this on Twitter actually, um, at Games and Graps. Ding. And Ding. <laughs> I, th- I, I said this is the first time I've cared about Enzo and Big Cass in a long time. Yeah, yeah. But they're seriously. doing a great job with this ride, with this feud. I think it's great. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, it's going to be good. I like How do you see this panning out? Because obviously, I, I imagine they're going to fight at Great Balls of Fire, right? Probably. But how can you have Enzo versus Big Cass? I mean, Enzo has already sort of said, I'm not the biggest, but I do have the biggest mouth. And yeah. Big Cass be, clearly was the muscle, so how does I mean, this I'd, work? I think it would be a bit of a squash, wouldn't it? It would be Big Cass would just destroy um, Enzo. Probably in like a really rigid fashion, like he'll have him beat, but then he won't refuse, like, refuse to pin him or something. Just like keep beating him up until like, the ref stops the match. Okay. And uh, yeah, just making Big Cass look like a big, big evil heel and okay. make them feel sorry for Enzo. And, All right. uh, I'm with it. Yeah. I'm with it. And then what? You don't see Enzo until they've figured out what they're going to do with him, maybe? Yeah, pretty much. Maybe okay. I'll give him like a little like mid card run. Maybe put him in Cruiserweight Division. Who knows? Hmm. Okay. But yeah, I, I, I'll I, see I, big I, things for Big Cass. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think we said this a while ago, didn't we? When uh, Big Cass was in that Fatal Four Way main event that time for the oh, yeah. Univer- for the Universal Title. Yeah, yeah. And he he put on a good show then. Uh, I thought he was good. I'm I'm glad I'm excited for uh, Big Cass's for Big Cass's run. Obviously, yeah. they need to get this bit out of the way first, just to establish him as the heel, and that's fine. Um, but you know, I'm I'm cool with it. I'm not mad at this little feud at all. I think it's better than I ever expected it to be. And this yeah, is only after same. a week, so uh, there's a couple more weeks until Great Balls of Fire. So a couple more weeks of Great, great Promos of and uh, build up. So cool, good stuff. Yeah. Hopefully, big guys love their new music next week. Yeah, I know. What the <laughs> hell? Come on, you've had a. I mean, they've either they, they either weren't prepared for Big Cass to be the heel and uh, yeah, be the person beating Enzo up, or they're just fucking lazy because 
You've had a week. Those guys in the back are talented enough. Get them to whip up something real quick. Yeah. Well, to be fair, Drew Magazar has um, bloody, what's his name's old engines music. Roderick With Strong. bagpipes. That's it, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Just put bagpipes on the top of it. It's like, yeah, that'll do. Fuck it. And something else I discovered <laughs> just yesterday on Twitter. Somebody was like, yeah, Roman Reigns' entrance theme is Taz's Just Slow Down. Oh, really? Yeah. Da, da. Oh, yeah, kind of. Yes, yeah. it is. It's just all it's all it, the only thing it doesn't have is like the flatliner thing in the background. Uh, yeah. Wow, I never noticed that. <laughs> because wrestling that's, laziness, that's why. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, so what happened after that? Thank uh, you to the guys on Twitter who pointed this out to me, by the way. I'm not, I'm not taking credit for that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so we had a quick match. Uh, Seth Rollins versus Kurt Hawkins. Um, surprisingly, Kurt didn't get completely squashed. He did have some offense, which is nice. Yeah, which uh, was good. I like that, actually. I mean, he, yeah. he came out and he, you know, he spoke before. Mm-hmm. He's like, who do you think, who do you think I'm going to lose this match? And do you think I'm going to win this match? Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, yeah he got his licks in, man. He did. Uh, the commentators were putting over that uh, Bray Wyatt was in his head and he couldn't concentrate, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Uh, but Seth still ended up winning because he caught it up. Yeah. Um, but then Bray Wyatt said stuff on the um, like Titan Tron fire satellite or whatever. Yeah, it was good. I enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was uh, it was a nice little exchange. Um, that'll be a good match as well. This is a cool little rivalry. I don't mind it. It's only very short term, I'm sure. Yeah, that's cool. Um, um, I don't think Seth's finisher works. I just don't. I don't. Anything? No, I don't like it. Yeah, it needs it needs something else, doesn't it? It seems like an extra little Cause step I know, to it. Maybe I know Kenny Omega does it. And that's hmm. well, it's his finishing move. So Seth has stolen it. Fine, but well, he did the one with Angel as well, which is cool. Yeah, but I don't know. I I just don't think it. It just it just gets lost, and the crowd don't pop for it. It's almost like they don't know it's his finisher. <laughs> yes, I kind of yeah. Which is very strange. It's, to be fair, he's only done it like once or twice before, and that's a bit. That's it, and then he's just lost since then. I guess. Uh, yeah, I maybe know. maybe it needs. A few more goes, but I don't know. I'm not sure of it. I don't like it anyway. I just think it looks... It's too slow. It is. It's too slow. It doesn't... lacks like, impacts. It does, yeah. It's like, like how, how many move people... is supposed to be, like, a big thing. Like, the rock bottom, you're smashing them onto the floor. The stunner is... It's the stunner and the pedigree. <laughs> They're all, these are all real, um, like, iconic moves. Yeah. But like, even, like, the, you know, the jackhammer and the F5 and, the you know, the AA and all that sort of stuff... People know they're coming. Like Seth Rollins, it just takes ages to set up. He has to like pick them up <laughs> off the floor and then grab their arm and then twist them around and then knee them in the face. It's like... Yeah. And also, how many people lose his like, money knees these days? Like everybody. No, It just... <laughs> he gets lost in the shuffle. I mean, the curb stomp had something about it because you knew it was coming. Curb stomp was awesome. Uh, uh, bring back the curb stomp. I still don't think it's as dangerous as they think it is. It so isn't. <laughs> I know we're it's not like professional wrestlers. I think it's more of a case where they can't be seen to be stomping someone's head into the floor. Yeah, it's like if you see kids trying to replicate it and then someone gets like, actually curbed on an actual curb or something. Yeah. And the kid dies and it's like, well, they did die because it was wrestling and wrestling is evil, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And they don't want it. Mm, I which guess is, so. Yeah. Which is dumb. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, kid, you know, don't try this at home, but kids are going to try this at home. Oh, yeah. Uh, of I mean, doing a power bomb is equally, is if not more, dangerous oh, than, yeah. uh, than doing a curb stump. But. Yeah. That's right. WWE. Yep, WWE logic. Banning um, shit. Yeah. So we had uh, Paul Heyman coming down, uh, saying stuff, introducing Brock Lesnar, hyping him up. Um, Brock Lesnar came down on the ramp, and then from behind, Samoa Joe out of nowhere. Oh, hell yeah. Locked in the Coquita co- 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 clutch. Uh, Brock turned purple. <laughs> <laughs> Very purple. Uh, tried to force, force his way out of the, uh, the clutch, but couldn't get out. Uh, but it was ended up uh, get it broken up by the locker room, aka the revival in Carl Anderson. <laughs> um, I don't yeah. know what everyone else was doing. No one's obviously no one's obviously hard enough to go and do it. <laughs> yeah, no one's brave enough. Just uh, yeah. just those three guys. Yeah, um, uh, I, yeah loved, cool. I loved it, this. It's very cool. I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. I thought Paul Heyman was excellent, um, yeah. as always. He always is, right. but um, he was really excellent. Him and Joe were doing a fantastic job of making this match. Um, you know, exciting. You know, it's an exciting match. You know, Samoa Joe versus Brock Lesnar. It's awesome. You know, and Joe That's and Heyman are doing a big, a, you know, a, making it sound like a big deal. Yeah. Making it feel like a big deal, you know? And it should. It should feel like a big deal. Yeah. And Joe is looking like an, an absolute monster. 
Yeah, yeah. Like he is one of the best things on WWE TV. Full stop at the minute. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I love um, that they're not making Brock beat the crap out of him before the match. I mean, I think yeah. I mean he'll get his he'll get his licks in before the match. Probably. But what they're doing at the minute is they're making out like Joe could really beat Brock. Of course he will not. I uh, know. He's no <laughs> way walking out of Great Balls of Fire without a belt. No way. But, yeah, it's a shame. You know, they're making Joe look real strong and like a yeah. real challenger to Brock, which is a which is really, really cool. And I like Very it. Very cool. I hope they're able to put in a decent match and it's not just a case of uh like Brock doing fifty two plexes and winning. Yeah. Um <laughs> as it tends to be. Uh, but I think hopefully if they give them the chance they'll put a decent match well it seems fairly promising so match. far because Brock is going along with all of this stuff he's getting choked out by Joe and you know he makes yeah. it look very cool so he's turn face without even being there didn't put Paul Heyman just kind of turn face yeah exactly yeah <laughs> I think that's a testament to how good Paul Heyman is oh, but yeah, I also absolutely. think it's a testament to how good Samoa Joe really is as well Oh, yeah. But um, yeah, man, I'm I'm really excited for this, and obviously Joe isn't going to come out of the winner. But I yeah. think this, I think there's big things in Joe's future, including a Universal Championship run for sure. Oh, I, think yeah. they, I think they Definitely. see in Joe what they have now. Yes, absolutely, really agree. Yeah. Uh, so then after that, we had uh, Lince Dorado versus Neville in the one and only Quizzo match of the night. It sucked as well. Shame. Yeah. Um, they had Tazara at ring, ringside because Tazara's a Neil, I guess. Yep. Shrug. To be honest, I, I, I have to be honest, I'm, mate, I'm growing. It's growing on me. <laughs> really? The Titus brand is growing on me, yeah. Hmm. I, I, I don't hate it anymore. I don't. I hated it at the start, but they're building a little faction of people here. Like, you've got yeah, Titus yeah. leading it, and he's very good on the microphone, and Tazawa looks really cool in a suit, and, you know, Titus is like the promoter and these guys like work for him and it's going to be like a, it's like a Don King type thing from back in the day like when yeah. uh, Don King was managing Tyson and all that sort of stuff it's not the same level of course because it's, it's Tyson <laughs> O'Neill and Akira Tozawa but you know it's hey, that it's type of balance. thing so he's got Apollo Crews and he's got Akira Tozawa and I don't know man I think it's just I quite like it I don't hate it anymore yeah I mean yeah, I'll think against it it's uh I mean, it gives Apollo and Star Wars to do. And I like those guys a lot. Um, I like that they're back together because they're like a team in Japan, which is awesome. Oh, um, cool, yeah. And they're buddies um, as well. They're, they're mates too. Yeah, yeah, they are. Good stuff. Um, so Neville ended up winning this match. Um, then Tozawa came in and like confronted Neville. Then Tyson Neil came down and uh, made a match with Great Walls of Fire because apparently he can do that. Uh, it's going to be Neville versus um, Tozawa for the championship. He did say, cool. though, as well, why give it away for free? I've true. got it cleared that we, the, you know, you can have the match on the pay per view, which is, which is really cool. I think. I think. Yeah. Uh, I like that Titus is working as that type of like boss in that type of role. I like it. Um, Akira Tozawa could win that belt as well. He could. I think so. Yeah, I think he could. I think um, if WWE is serious about this Titus brand thing, hmm. they'll give it some credibility by maybe putting that belt on Tozawa. That'd be cool. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I mean, we'll see how it goes in the next couple of weeks before yeah. we do our predictions for Great Balls of Fire, which actually will be next week. Uh, yeah, I think it will be. So we'll see what happens next week. But um, I think, I mean, Tazawa is a legitimate competitor anyway without the Titus brand. Oh, but this awesome. gives him a little bit more and it also has a storyline behind it. We'll see. But uh, I think Tazawa could win. We'll, we'll play it by ear. Cool. Uh, so we had the main event of the night, which is a uh, women's first ever women's gauntlet match uh, that determined the number one contender for the uh, championship. Yep. All right, the first two entrants were Bailey as number one and then Nia Jack as number two. And they good look back and forth until uh, Bailey got eliminated with like a shitty Simone drop, which I hate. It's not a finisher. Ugh. Hey, anything can be a finisher. <laughs> but everyone does a Simone drop. This I do a true. Simone drop. But yeah, <laughs> that's fair enough. But in your Simone <laughs> drop is legit as well. It is. It's the best Simone drop. It is. It's a Finn Owen drop. Finn Owen drop, yeah. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so uh, number three was Mickey James. Uh, and that was fine until night one with a winning nothing. Uh, it's like a running buddy flop, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just, just, just really just ran into her and she just fell over and that was it. Yeah. 
meh. Then, then it broke with number four. You got beaten in like five seconds with a shitty leg drop. Yeah. For some reason, you got like a massive pop. Yeah, like, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why either, but I mean, it, I think it's because it looked like Liar's, Liar? Naya's <laughs> massive leg just like crushed Dana's tiny head. <laughs> I guess so. It's like, I mean, yeah, I didn't want to see any metal either, but still. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and number five was Emma, who could have been, could have been an awesome uh, performance, but didn't because he got beaten in like 10 seconds with this another JJ Samoan drop. Ah. Yeah. Uh, but then we had uh, Shasta Banks came down. There's number six, which was much, much better. Uh, Naya was dominant. Uh, for the most part, but Sasha was resilient, kicking out everything. Yeah, ended up, ended up fighting back. A lot was able to lock in like a standing bank statement, which is cool. Uh, Nia, Nia was uh, always losing consciousness and ended up uh, tapping out. Yay! So Sasha Banks is the uh, well-deserved number one contender for the women's championship. Yeah, I mean, I to be honest, I really enjoyed the gauntlet. I thought it made yeah. Nia Jax look very, very strong indeed. Um, in my opinion, I think maybe she should have won it. They could have mm. teased Sasha winning, but maybe had Nia win it because they've been doing this whole back and forth thing with uh, Nia Jackson, Alexa Bliss, like backstage True, and stuff. And it would have just made sense from a storyline perspective, I think. But mm, having said so. that, yeah, this is true. Having yeah. said, but although everybody cheers Alexa Bliss, oh, true. Um, <laughs> it makes sense. I mean, from a wrestling perspective, I think we'll get a better match out of uh, Sasha and Alexa, but oh, yeah. for sure. But yeah, I mean, I thought it was good. It was a great way to finish Raw. I thought the girls did a really great job. Yes, there was a couple of squashes in there, but at the end of the day, they served a purpose. Yeah. So I agree. I, it was I, fine. I, it was fine. I'm not um, at it. it was good. I think Nia needs a little bit more, I don't know, something before she's ready for a championship run, personally. She's okay. still, I don't know, something's missing. Needs better moves. <laughs> and Sonia isn't a Simone drop as a finisher. Um, mm. Or leg drop. If you're gonna do a Simone drop, at least make it look good. Yeah, right. Because she's—I mean, she's literally sort of flopping them over her head, <laughs> pretty much. And it doesn't—it just doesn't look good at all. But yeah, um, I think Nia could be a real monster heel champion. Oh yeah, I mean WWE loves their monsters, mm, and she certainly is one. And she, oh, yeah. for the women division, because the women's division, other than Tamina, who is on SmackDown, of course, on Raw, mm-hmm. everybody is fairly small. True. True so, so I think I think Sasha and uh, uh, bloody Alexa Bliss will be a great match. I think they will as well. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I, you know, I like that they closed Raw with the with the women's match. Yeah, um, it, it sure it shows that they still have a lot of faith um, in what the girls are doing. I think that's great. Yeah, same. I'm well. a big supporter of the girls. Same. Uh, so yeah, that was it for Raw, and it was good this uh, week. I thought it was okay. It was yeah, it was okay. Yeah, it was some good stuff. So Enzo, Enzo and Cass segment was good. Samoa mm-hmm. Joe and Brock Lesnar was great. Uh, yep. Heyman again backstage with a we we didn't speak about this, but he had a backstage promo after all of that had kicked off. Oh yeah, and uh, he at the end to end his promo, he said, "Goodness, goodness gracious, great balls of fire." <laughs> yeah. In the only way that Paul Heyman can, and it was great. So that was good, and the women's uh, women's match at the end was great as well. So, uh, well done, Raw. You weren't shit this week. Yes, good job. <laughs> um. So yeah, so SmackDown. SmackDown was not a good one, I thought. Okay. Um, yeah, it started off with uh, Daniel Bryan hyping up the ladder match late in the night. Mm. Uh, then coming on Ellsworth interrupts. And, like Ellsworth gets in uh, Daniel Bryan's face and is then banned from the arena and is like dragged away from the, by the security. Okay. So, well, funny. Wrestlers in training. Yeah, jobbers, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did you see, uh, on an, uh, just speaking of Daniel Bryan, did you see the tweet that he sent to Cody Rhodes? Oh, about um, him being the longest reigning Ming Wallen champion? Yes. It's like, we all at that time, maybe I'll come for you. Ooh. I'd That'd love be cool. that. Me too. <laughs> I would absolutely love that. But yeah. in, I'm predicting here that uh, in 480 whatever days, Cody will be back in WWE. Probably. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Cody's great. He's doing great things at the minute. He's, he's, you know, he's, having a, he's, he's doing very well. Yeah. But he's a very much a WWE guy. It's true. And he wrestles very much in WWE style. I I like him. I don't think he's incredible. I just think he's okay. Ooh, and I ooh. think I think eventually he'll end up <laughs> back in WWE. Uh, yeah, I think he will. Um, I think he's gone. He's going to do like a Drew McIntyre. He's like going to need to prove himself, uh, get a big like fan following, and WWE will see that. So like, oh, okay, he does have you know 
the if factor and then they'll bring it back and you'll do good things, I think. Oh yeah, I think so. I think I think you I think you'll do fine. I think yeah. it's good, but like I said, I'm not overly enamored with him. Hmm. Fair play. Um right. so we had uh, the hype bros versus the Us O's uh in the match. And yeah. it was fine. Fine. And it <laughs> and took, one. what was ridiculous is they literally just came back from the break in time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that. I thought it was like a bug in my recording, but yeah, I guess not. Nope. So they kept it back literally break came back. Uh, <laughs> Zack Ryder just missed the broski boot. All right. And then the Usos hit the splash and won. Literally, as they cut back from adverts. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That was weird. Do we um, really usually good oh, at that stuff as well? I'm surprised. Yeah. Welcome back, Zach. Have a loss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so after the match, New Day came down. Uh, said, We're coming for you, Usos. Yeah. Us. 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 Family. They did some weird uh, rapping segment, which I didn't understand. I was sort of really confused by it. I was like, <laughs> when then when I heard the Usos talking, I was like, wait, are they are they rapping or? I don't sort know of. what's going on here. I, I don't get it. It's weird. Um, yes. So uh, later in the night, they announced that next week there's going to be a rap battle between the Usos and the New Day, which uh, should be interesting. <laughs> so I think it'll make, it'll make it will be funny. Oh, <laughs> I've just, just put my head in my hands. <laughs> I mean, it'll, it'll be a funny thing. I don't think it's going to be like a serious like, rap battle. It's, gonna be, it's a New Day, so it can't be, can it? It's going to be funny. Okay. I have faith. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, they're going to have a match at Battleground anyway for the tag team trials. Of course, yeah. Because uh, they retained it uh, via DQ, so, uh, yeah, I knew they have a reason for a uh, rematch. It was count out, wasn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, count out. Uh, I think New Day will win the belts, I mean, you know, whenever Battleground is. It's like a few weeks away, isn't it, that? Uh, yeah, I think a few weeks still. So if Great Balls of Fire is next weekend, that means Battleground will be two weeks after that, because that's how it works these days, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's probably be the twenty third, apparently. Yep, that, that, that works. Yeah, yeah. So we had another uh, fashion vice episode with Brizango, um, <laughs> and they're interrogating the ascension. Yeah, I, I love these segments. <laughs> they're very funny. Uh, they offered them uh, Eddie money tickets. Uh, I still don't who that was. It's an eighties singer, apparently. Okay. Uh, and he said, uh, "We we listen to grindcore thrash metal. Remember?" <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. Uh, but then as they were getting interrogated, uh, their office got trashed again. So it wasn't the after all. Who do you think got... it is? <laughs> um, I don't know. Revival? No, not Revival. No, more. Um, American Alpha? Eh. But that means American Alpha coming back as heels. Hmm. Because oh, obviously no. Breeze and Fandango are well over at the minute. Oh, yeah. People love them. Uh, the Ascension were funny as well. I mean, I'm, I, I feel sorry <laughs> that they're having to sort of do these comedy things to... You know, I, I don't know where they are right now. I don't know what is going on with the Ascension or if they'll ever do anything worth yeah. doing ever again. But uh, again. They, they were funny. They did what they need. They 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 played their part. They did. And then they, at the end, they like come come and come back to them. Come back to them when they both took the uh, Eddie money ticket. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we had um, a rematch from uh, Money in the Bank. It was Naomi versus Lana for the women's championship. I'm into Lana's entrance theme. Uh, I'm into Lana. Fair enough. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but I like her theme. I like her entrance theme. It's good. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. I, 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 I don't know why I like it. I think it's because you could just you have a little jig to it. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so Lana attacked before the match started. Um, the match did start. Lana hit the spine buzzer straight away, but Naomi kicks out. Uh, then Naomi kicks it with her head, hits a uh, split leg moonsault. It's missed, uh, but won. And uh, it's very short and kind of squashed Lana, which is a shame. I don't know why they're doing that. I don't mm. know. I don't understand the logic behind it. It's weird because, you know, she's just come in. Um, she had a she had a match and she was distracted by Carmella at Money in the Bank. Fine, here's another match. But then just to do that, I just it doesn't make any sense to me. It's just so weird. Yeah, um, it was a bit. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. I really don't. Oh, it's because wrestling, right? Yeah, pretty much. And then Lana threw like a hissy bit backstage or whatever. Mm. So, yeah, 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 I'm not sure with it. I, I'm not. <laughs> I, I, don't get me wrong. I don't think they should put the belt on her. Um, no, not yet. 
I mean, for reasons that we discussed on the mini podcast. <laughs> yeah. You know, she's not great. She's not great at all, but <laughs> I don't know. I think there's a way to book it. I don't think that's it. Yeah. Not just... Like, to, like not even just have a not wrestle. Yeah, just, just, <laughs> I don't know. Just do some sort of screwy finishes with her. Build her up as, a, as the heel that she's absolutely supposed to be. Yeah. Um, but don't have her losing just clean for no reason because now what happens to her? Yeah, seriously. I don't know. We'll see. Weird. But uh, I don't know. I'm not I'm not keen on that at all. No. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Mm. Uh, so then we had uh, Aiden English in the ring. Who was, yes. Uh, about to start singing. <laughs> as he does. Mm. But then uh, Randy Orton interrupted and arcaded him during the break, which is weird. Because he came back from break and there's like, we just Randy Orton sitting in the chair in the ring. <laughs> it seems like to me that they just really fucked up the breaks this week. <laughs> it seems to be. Yeah. There was no planning at all. Yeah. Weird one. Uh, but he uh, wanted a rematch for the WWE title. Uh, because which he gets. Because of course. Which he gets. So he makes a match. But uh, Jinder Mahal, only Jinder Mahal can choose a stipulation. And then Jim Hall comes down and chooses a Punjabi prison match? Question mark. Because if, the last one, because the last one went so well, I guess. Oh God! <laughs> I can't yeah. believe they're they're bringing this back up because it's a it's weird one. Crap! It was a bit crap. To be fair, the great Collie was crap, so a lot of it put on him, I guess. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I like down the names options well, like it was some sort of like legend. Oh, the great Collie, he was so great. He wasn't. <laughs> it was shit. Everything yeah. he did was shit. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Like the best thing he ever did was be in the Longest Yard, the which what? is an Adam Sandler movie. Oh, okay. He's in that <laughs> with a bunch of other wrestlers. I think uh, Stone Cold's in there, Kevin Nash is in there, Goldberg's in there, and the Great Carly's in there. All right, okay. So that's just a, it's a fun Weird. movie. Go check it out. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time for movies. Come on. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think like in in India, like the Great Carly is lauded as some sort of incredible wrestler, but. Yeah, I guess. Or at least some sort of incredible spectacle. To yeah. me, he is neither. But he was the former WWE World Heavyweight Champion, so... Yeah, I guess so. Wrestling. Wrestling. Wrestling! But, um, yeah, I mean, as a concept, the Punjabi prison doesn't look bad. I mean, on paper. But, I don't know. I hate hmm. that because they've got an Indian-slash-American guy <laughs> wrestling. yeah. Do they have to drag these types of things out? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. It's like, oh, right, we it's need weird. a stipulation. You know what? He's he's brown, <laughs> so it's time to pull out the Punjabi prison match again. Yeah. It's like, mm. come on, guys. Come yeah, on. Weird one. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll see. Man, yeah, it could be interesting. We'll see. Uh, so then we had uh, Mike and Maria Canellis coming out to the overly catchy uh, theme song mm. which just stuck in my head forever <laughs> and as they were talking uh, Sami Zayn came out interrupted like ran straight to the middle of them which is funny and then apologised like oh sorry I got a match to get to uh, and <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah it was, it was funny um, so I'm not sure what Mike and Maria are going to be doing going forwards but I think we've got to wait and wait to find out yeah I think this could be a thing so they, if they keep getting interrupted like I said on the mini podcast, I think it's going to be a case where um, Maria's going to keep getting interrupted and all that sort of stuff, and Mike is just going to flip. Yeah, it's a snap and, and just like beat the crap out of someone. Yeah, I, I see big things for Mike Mike Bennett. I really do. Yeah, I yeah. just hope this stands the test of time. This gimmick because they, they've really got to bear with it because it it is annoying, <laughs> and it's not what people are used to seeing from Mike Bennett. Should they know who he actually is? But, yeah, true. Um, I, I'm with it for now. Yeah, I'm okay with it. And I think Mike Bennett is very talented, and oh, I yeah. hope they do this well. Yeah, I think they will. I have high yeah. hopes for it. I mean, I think he'll have a match at Battleground. I think we'll start seeing the seeds be sown over the next few weeks. Maybe he could even fight Sammy. Maybe that'd be a good, good, uh, good match. I'd like yeah, to. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, I'd like to see that, actually. I think that'd be pretty cool. So, this could be a thing. Sammy could interrupt him each week. So, I mean, is this, what's this, their second appearance on SmackDown? Uh, yeah, I think so. What happened the first week? I didn't I didn't see it. I think the first, first time it was on uh, the pay-per-view, wasn't it? Uh, Money in the Bank. Mm-hmm. And then the next week, they were there, but it's like on the dark segment. It wasn't on TV. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. For some reason. Yeah. Jesus. 
So yeah, this is technically their first appearance on TV on SmackDown. Okay, and interrupted by Sami Zayn. So, yes. did they sort of sell? I'm, I, I, this is where I sort of zoned out. Of, of, I've not seen SmackDown <laughs> at this point. So okay. did, they, did they sell anger at this or confusion or did they sell it at all? Uh, yeah, they're kind of like, what the hell's going on? What's this? And then it's kind of wandered off to the back. Mm. And then, then, then it was like an ad break and then by the time the ads came back, it was like, Sammy Zayn versus Corbin was going on. Jesus. Yeah, weird one. They've really not done this well this week, have they? <laughs> they haven't. Um, but yeah, Sammy Zayn versus Baron Corbin. It was a good match. Um, Sammy Zayn had beaten Corbin twice before. Uh, so he was due for a loss, which he did. And Corbin beat him. Um, like making the uh, new money, Mr. Money Bank looking strong. That's exactly what they're is, doing. Uh, that's, that's, the, yeah. that's the very reason that he's won that match. Because... Yep, he is the Mr. Money in the Bank, and he will be the future WWE champion. Uh, so I expect an awful lot of Baron Corbin wins and mm-hmm. a lot of Baron Corbin TV time going forward. Absolutely. And in, in the end of days, it's a cool finish as well. Oh, yeah, it's really cool, yeah. Very cool. Big future for Baron. Big, big, big future. This is a huge year Very. for him. Oh, yeah. Huge absolutely. year. Yeah, so then we had the main events of the night, mm-hmm. which is the Money in the Bank rematch. Uh, with Charlotte, Carmella, Becky Lynch, Tamina, and Natalia. And it was much, much better than the uh, one on Baby View. Thank God. They're yeah. making amends for uh, the match that just wasn't that great at Money in the Bank. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to watch it after we finish this podcast while I'm sending you the files and all that sort of stuff. I'm going to have it on in the background so I can see it for myself. Cool. But I've heard that it was very good. And it's great that both sets of girls are really knocking it out of the park this week. I'm really, yeah. really happy. Because they were the main event on both of the big shows, so that's great. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, yes, yeah, lots of awesome spots. Um, I won't spoil it too much for you. No, no, it's fine. You carry on. Okay. <laughs> at one point, um, there are four women, four women climbing the ladder at once, and then I kind of like, toppled over, and then the uh, commander like jumped in, climbed the ladder. Then the other four lifted the ladder up while she's still on it and moved it to the side, so you can reach the uh, briefcase. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, yeah. Um, one one point, there's like a kind of a weird botch kind of thing, I guess. Okay. Uh, Tamina, uh, Charlotte traps Tamina under the, under the ladder. Um, but then they, she realized that they weren't facing a hard camera, so she had to move the ladder across. And Tamina kind of crawled back under the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really weird and stupid. Uh, but then Tamina did a spot where she like lifted the ladder up uh, while Charlotte was climbing it. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Making really cool. Tamina look strong. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, same about the Bosch but <laughs> I thought they could have just left it how it was because like, they have so many cameras they could have just left it and they'll of course they can edit out. it however they want I mean come yeah. on I don't know why they did that it was weird yeah. um, uh, Natalia did like a very botched looking powerbomb to um, poor Becky landed right on her neck ouch oh. uh, yeah not good uh, thankfully I think she was okay I haven't heard about any injuries or anything so uh, I haven't either so that's that's promising for sure yeah Fuck's sake, Natalia, be careful. Yeah, no, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, Ellsworth managed to find his way back into the building. Um, because of course he did. Of course, of course. Uh, carried Carmella into the ring, uh, went to climb the ladder, but stopped by Becky Lynch, who uh, kicked Carmella out of the way and pushed Ellsworth off the ladder. He landed balls first onto the top rope. Ouch. Ouch. Very ouch. <laughs> uh, so Becky Lynch climbed the ladder to get the briefcase. Uh, Carmella stopped her. Uh, Becky fights her off but hurts her leg in the process. Uh, getting Carmella then uh, grabs a chair, hits her in the leg, hits her in the back. Um, no one else is around. Carmella climbs the ladder, grabs the briefcase, and wins. So, still, Money in the Bank ladder match winner, Miss Money in the Bank. Um, it's Carmella. Yay. Why do you think they've just had her win it again? Um, I don't know. I hope it isn't because of backlash from idiots on the internet saying, oh, it's going to win like this. Men shouldn't be winning women's matches. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I bet it is. I bet yeah. people, they saw the feedback, uh, didn't like it, and now they they just thought, right, the match wasn't that good, let's just have it again, and let's have Carmella, Carmella win it fair and square-ish. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with, with, I mean, I'm glad they went, the match went a longer, I'm glad they had more spots and made everyone look better. I'm glad Carmella won. Yeah, me too. I think she needed it out of everyone. Cause, yeah. Like, much like um, Baron Corbin. Everyone else is pretty much over already. Bob and Tamina, but who cares? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like Camilla, and uh, I see holding for holding on to it for a long time. Yeah, I do as well. I think she's going to be great with it as well. I don't know if oh, you yeah. saw on social media. She posted a picture of her riding on the train with her briefcase. 
Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, which was pretty, really pretty cool. So, uh, I mean, with Tamina, you have that sort of Nia Jack situation there. Hmm, true. Where it's like, you know, she could be the monster of SmackDown because she's good? strong. Mm-hmm. She's, she looks the part for sure. It's just, personality-wise, it's just a little bit dry. Yeah, it's lacking something. Yeah, I can't like put Nia. my finger on it. I mean, she's been in WWE for years now. Oh, yeah. All First came in with the Usos. Yeah. Usos, like, yeah. like a heel manager. I think, I don't know what they, I, mean, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what they need to do. I, I, I'm, it's the same with Nia. They need to inject some sort of believable heel or face personality into them. And yeah. preferably heel because of their size. They could be real dominant. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Face or heel, who cares? But um, <laughs> they need to really figure it out for both of them. Because Nia seems to get to that point. And then they take it away from her because maybe they don't have the faith in her that they do in, say, a Sasha or a Charlotte or a Becky. Yeah. Uh, I think that might be the same with Tamina. They they got her there and they like having her there, but they just are too scared to pull the trigger. Yeah, I think it might be right there. Mm. No. Mm. Either way, it's great to see the girls closing out the shows and it's great to see them putting on such great matches too. Yeah, it's cool. Good times. Good stuff. Well done, ladies. You. <laughs> you. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That was uh, SmackDown. That was a big wrestling. Um, cool. Cool. So, Finn. So, hello. What have you um, got I have for a, me? I have, a certain, I have a certain book here. Oh, that, uh, okay. You may be familiar with. Yeah. Not it's your duty, but the book is at my place right now. So, yes. this week's episode of the Games of Grabs podcast is brought to you by the letter... D. On, please. D. For D Generation X. Oh, hello. Uh, what have we got here? We've got... Uh, Stellar job, by the way, on the uh, the opening to that segment. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> uh, who have we got here? We've got Deuce and Domino. Remember them? I do remember them. Uh, they had uh, they had a girl with them as well. Cherry, is that what her name was? Uh, yeah, that was it. I liked Cherry. her. She was fine. Yeah. Oh, no, there she is now holding the uh, tag team titles. They, wait, uh, they were tag team champions? Apparently so, yeah. Sure, I don't remember I that. I don't remember okay. that at all. Nope. <laughs> uh, oh, that might be a good one. I'll come back to that. Um, Demolition, classic tag team. Classic. Back in the WWE day. hates them. Vince McMahon hates them. Yep. <laughs> Dean Ho, what was that? Who? Dean, I might come back to that one. It's the Tormentine 2 right now. Um, okay. We've got Dean Malenko. Excellent. Excellent wrestler. Excellent technical wrestler. One of the best. One of my favourite matches of his is with Scotty Too Hotty at Backlash 2000. It's a superb match. Oh, very nice. Uh, For the uh, Light Heavyweight Championship as well, it was. Ooh. Mm. David Ard Smith, he was there for like five minutes. Who? <laughs> David Ard Smith. He uh, was tag team partner with uh, Tarzan Kid for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he's uh, he's going by Davy Boy Jr., isn't he, on the Indies or something now? Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't rate him. I don't think he's very... Yeah, I just don't rate him. I don't think good. he's very good. <laughs> yeah. He was on World of Sport and they made it like, made out like it was a massive deal that he was there and I was just thinking this guy sucks. <laughs> yeah. He sucks. Oh, we've got Derek Bateman who is now um, Ethan Clark III. Yes. He, uh, his hair in that picture as well <laughs> is brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. He looks completely different. <laughs> Still super chiseled but he looks completely different. He said that's yeah. It's funny. Um, Dick Murdoch. Oh, hello. <laughs> Dick Murdoch. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, is, isn't he, was he the father of Trevor Murdoch or some relation? Uh, possibly. If you remember Trevor Murdoch and Lance yeah. Cade or Garrison Cade or whatever people were calling him at the time. <laughs> uh, Blink the Clown, of course. Of course. Dolph Tickler, who's he? Nah, some dick. <laughs> Drew, Mac- Drew McIntyre, I know him. Yeah. Yeah. Big Drew with bagpipes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's Scottish. Yeah, awesome. Let's put bagpipes in his uh, in his entrance theme. Yeah, that'll Be- do. Because nationalities. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go with uh, Dean Ho. Uh, great name. Happy. Great name. Uh, this happy Hawaiian uh, was a bodybuilder who won the Mister Hawaiian Islands Championship in 1956. Excellent. Uh, yes. In 1962, Dean Ho made his in-ring debut. Uh, or made his ring debut in the Pacific Northwest Wrestling Territory 
and for the next de decade, Ho appeared all over the Pacific Northwest and Hawaii. Uh, in 1973, Dean debuted in WWE and tested his skills against the best and the brightest. Dean Ho's mm. in-ring style combined martial arts, grappling abilities, and aerial moves. In other words, he was a wrestler. Sure, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he formed a popular tag team with Tony Garea, shrug, and the duo went on to hold a World Tag Team Championship for what lasted six months. Wow. Tony Garea worked uh, backstage at WWE for years and years. I don't know if he still oh. does. Uh, hmm. I'm not too sure. But he worked, in, he worked backstage in WWE for years and years. Interesting. Uh, Dean continued to appear on WWE until 1976. Uh, he then travelled to Georgia, San Francisco, and returned to Vancouver and Portland. He decided to hang up his boots in December 1983. Okay. Today, the happy Hawaiian lives in Vancouver, BC, and owns a highly touted gourmet catering business. Nice. Sounds good. Dean uh, Ho. You know, yeah, Dean had recognised all his in-ring accomplishments and versatility, as well as persona that influenced countless others and set foot in the ring after him. Nice. Well, despite having a funny name, he actually, you know, he's actually a very talented guy by the sounds of it. Yeah, he's a nice guy. A talented and individu and influential yeah. wrestler. Good stuff. Excellent. Awesome. So there you go. So this week's episode of the Games and Grabs podcast was brought to you by the letter D. D. Yeah. Boys and girls. 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 This has been episode 64 of the Games and Grabs podcast. And we are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that will post every single Friday across podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. And youtube.com forward slash Sunny Finn Play. And yep. youtube.com forward slash Daydreamer Gaming. Yeah. Don't forget to check out the return of my own What Happened NXT podcast Ooh. that will be coming every Thursday after I've watched NXT. Nice. But for now, we're the Games and Grass podcast. We're back and we're going nowhere. I'm Sonny. I'm Finn. And we will speak to you next week, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Take care. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Divas.